something on tonight. Particularly two things, uh, two verses rather, that is, um, on tonight, the first one will be from the topic, it was for my good. It was for my good. Let me get myself together here. And give up the scripture. Genesis chapter 50. Genesis 50. Let me get my Bible pulled up here. Most of us is familiar with the story of Joseph, right? Most of us are familiar with the term that he used towards his brother in the 20th verse. And I want you to look at Genesis 50 and verse 20. I'm going to take some of this space out. Yeah, my voice is a little bassy. It would have to work better. That's good for me. Genesis 50, verse 20. Now let's back up to the Back up to the 15th verse. The 14th verse. Because in the 14th verse, Joseph's father is dead. The 14th verse says, And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father. And after he had buried his father, Joseph, when Joseph's brethren saw that their fathers, their father were dead. They said, Joseph will preadventure hate us and will certainly requit us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent messengers, sent a messenger rather, they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying, Thou father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of our Father. 
And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren, in verse 18, his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people. Now, therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Let's look at Romans chapter 8 and let's go to verse 28. Romans 8 and 28. Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that how many things? We know that some things. We know that partial things. We know that some things. We know that a few things. All right, so I guess I'm wrong. We know that. All right, there we go right there. All things work together for the good. Amen? It worked together for the good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. You might want to give him his cup. He's going to get a whooping. We know that all things work together for the good. The story of Joseph in Genesis, it actually breaks off and then it goes into somebody else's story and then it comes back to Joseph. Joseph picks up into the 30th chapter of Genesis. When he was a young teenager, growing up, his father loved him. His father had much respect for him because Joseph was the strength of Jacob's arm. He was the strength of Jacob. Not only was he Jacob's strength, but he was jo Jacob's favorite it's dangerous when you are a parent and you pick out a particular child to favorize because the one you love the most can to be one can be the one that will hurt you and break you the most the one that you esteem highly above the others can be the one who can see you on your sick bed and act as if they don't care anything about you. But in this case, Joseph was different. His father loved him more than the other brother. Can you blame them? When all the other brothers are wild and out of control, all right, all right. don't like the mind and don't want to be truthful, 
But Joseph being the one who said, I'm going to stick with my brother, I mean my mother and my father, and do as they say. Even if it requires me to give my life as a sacrifice. I'm going to hold on to what they teach. And I'm going to walk in the principles of their teaching. Joseph's father loved him so much that when it got close to winter time. He went and he knitted him a coat of many colors. That only represents the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob knew what he was doing because he had already gotten instructions from the Most High. All right. All right. He had already had a vision with God showing who was going to reign. Joseph just didn't know. As the story goes on, Joseph began to get visitations from God. He gets visitations in dreams. Now watch what the hard thing come in. It's easy when God is showing you a vision. It's good to shout over God gave you a dream. But what happens when there's no voice to back up what you see? Uh huh. Just take a minute and think about that. What happens when there is no voice to back up what you see? Jacob was familiar with the voice of God. And Jacob saw the Lord. He saw the Lord in a vision. When the Lord was giving him that dream when he laid his head on the side of a pillar, uh -huh. which was a brick. Yeah. He laid his head on the side. Yeah. Now watch this. He saw in the dream angels ascending and descending on the ladder. Uh -huh. And when Jacob arose out of his dream, he said, surely the Lord is in this place. How dreadful is this place? Okay. He pitched his tent there and he named it Jehovah Shammah, okay. the Lord that is there. Uh -huh. That was during the time he was running from Esau, his brother, uh -huh. on his way to his uncle Laman's house. Okay. God talked to Jacob, and God revealed to Jacob. Uh -huh. So Jacob had visions and dreams, but had the voice to go with it. All right, all right. But when it came down to Joseph, Joseph never heard God speak, but he did see God reveal. Somebody in this house may be mistaken. You might think because God haven't spoke to you that you don't belong to him. But I got news for you. If you seeing things that you ain't never seen before, you knew it ain't nobody gave it to you to see it. You know it ain't nobody but God. God might not speak to you, but God will reveal some things to you. And tell you to just be still and wait to hear my voice. Jacob was familiar with God. He was so familiar with God to where he wrestled with the Lord all night. He said, look, it's getting ready to be daybreak. And you still tussling and wrestling with me. And the angel of the Lord told him, I got to go. Jacob said, I can't let you go right. until you bless me. All right. I just wish I knew some folks in here that can say, in spite of my wrong and my bad, yeah. I'm not letting go God till he bless me. Right. He can press into the hind of my thigh. Yeah. I can walk in here straight up and walk out with a limp, but I'm not letting go until God bless me. I'm not giving up my last breath until God bring my promise to pass. I'm not going to die in no battle or no situation because of no heart attack until God do what he said he's going to do. And the heart attack still won't have nothing on me because what? No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Joseph 
said to his father and his mother, I had a dream. Kind of sound like Martin Luther King right there, don't you? He said, I had a dream. And in that dream, the Lord showed me that there would be the sun and the moon. And they both were bowing down. And I saw stars falling at my feet. The, mother, the father said, so are you trying to say that your mother and I and your brothers are going to bow before you? He said, I don't really know what, but I know I saw something. Okay, okay. He go and dream again. Mm -hmm. And the Lord give him another dream about some sheaves in the field. Mm -hmm. That he was gathering sheaves and when he gathered with his brothers, his brother's sheaves had made obedience unto his sheaves. And he came and he ran and told them. The Bible say the more that he told his dream, they begin to hate him the more. Oh you got to be careful when you tell folks right. your dream. Right. Right. You got to be careful out there on social media when you start releasing on social media the things that God is getting ready to do for you because not everybody that's throwing up praying hands is actually praying. Right. Right. Yeah. You're going to have to be careful. You got to be careful when you Receive revelation from God and God is getting ready to take you to another dimension in him and getting ready to take you deeper down inside of him and getting ready to take you depth, uh, to the depths of him and higher heights in him. You got to be careful not to release it before time. Job's problem was is that he had a mouth on him that was so anxious. Uh, and you would expect for a young man like him to be growing up in a house who was loved by his father and esteemed by his mother, that he would receive the same type of results from his brothers. Somebody say, it just don't work like that. Sometimes God will place you as the black sheep of the family and tell you, don't trip over this. Because if it had not been for this, you would have that. Man, I miss something about something. If God can take your mind off of this and get you from tripping over this and can get you to look at that, then you can understand that this shall pass, but that is coming to pass. Now they won't talk to me up in here. God, you want me to get my mind off of this? He said, yeah, because that's your present situation. But if you look at that, that's your revelation right there. Your present situation should not determine your revelation by which I'm going to reveal and do what I'm going to do. Because watch this. I am the Lord thou God, and if I said it, it shall come to pass. What is coming to pass? This that has already took place is, I can't do nothing about it, it's over with. But that that God said is coming to pass. What is that? Whatsoever things God said, what is that? Whatsoever things that I desire when I say it, what is that? Whatever it is that speak out of my mouth and go into the atmosphere and God say, now I'm going to raise it up into a reality. I'm going to raise it up into a reality. Joseph's problem was is that he was too anxious to tell his dream. He told his dream to his brothers, and the more he told it, the more they hate him. They hate him so much so to where they decided that they would kill him. One day the brother was out in the field, and his father told him, said, go and fetch your brothers. Tell them it's child time. Tell them it's getting late in the evening. Come on in. We got enemies out there. We got Amalekites out there that don't like us. We got Amorites out there. They can't stand us. We still fighting Philistines. They don't like us. So go fetch your brothers and tell them, come on close to home. And watch this. He go looking for me and say, brothers. The Bible say when they saw him, they conspired to kill him. When they saw him, he wasn't even close. And they saw him and said, there go that old dreamer. You got to be careful. Even when you in a church setting, sometimes folks get tired of you testifying. 
they get tired of you Pam shouting like you do. But they don't know why you shout like you do. Sometimes, Mother Pat, they get tired of you coming in here running around the church. But they don't know why you running around the church. First lady, they get tired of you up here behind this podium. But they don't know the hell you have to go through just to get to the podium. Well, come on here, somebody. Uh, uh, a preacher, man, they get tired of you sometimes. But they don't know what you got to go through sometimes just to get to what you're trying to get to. And, and, and Brandon, sometimes uh, another, when you, you're faced with a challenge, it don't always seem like God is in that challenge with you. It seems like you by yourself. Do I have a witness in this house? It seems like you're by yourself and you get the question, where is God in all of this? I want to see you, God. God say, I'm not speaking. I'm only revealing this season. I ain't going to say a word. I'm just going to show my word. Come on here, somebody. I ain't got to open my mouth and say nothing. I can just put my eyes on it and it's going to do what I tell it to do. God ain't got to do nothing. But yet he does. He has done everything. He goes and he tells them, he says, to them, he go and he tell them, listen, they go that dreamer. Uh -huh. That dreamer is coming. Uh -huh. They say, look, let's do away with him who we think he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He think he's better than us. Uh -huh. We know God loved him. I mean, we know our father loved him yeah, yeah, yeah. more than he loved us. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says that Joseph was a good looking fellow. Uh -huh. The Bible says he was good with his hands. Uh -huh. And everything he put his hands to, God made it to prosper. All right. So not only was he facing jealousy in the home, uh -huh. but he was facing jealousy because he was anointed. All right. And it's bad when you are the one in your family that's anointed and you got all the other family folks against you. Right. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. It's bad when you know God has anointed you down in your bone, right. but yet your own blood. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Can I be real and tell you that you can be the daughter to a mother? Come on here, somebody. I'm going there. And your mama hates you and try to live her life through you because she messed up her life. Uh, Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Mama had five, six kids and wasn't nothing and didn't go too far. Now she telling you, you ain't nothing and you ain't going to go too far. God raising you up, girl. I don't see why you go down there to that church with them hypocrite folk all that shout. You know, I used to go there, but I don't go there no more. Mama, shut your hating mouth up and get back to God like you need to get back to God. And don't be mad because I'm right there with God because I'm going to stick with God for him I live and for him I'm going to die. Y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. You don't know what I got to go through to stay with God. Come on here, somebody. But I don't understand it, Mama. I just know God put me here and I'm here to stay. Mama can sometimes get so mad at the dog. Get mad at her. Until she say, I need to carry your kids on my taxes. Y'all living in my house. I need you to give me my food stamps. Pay my bills. Since I let you live up in here. But wait a minute. Did you see all of that, mother? When she was an infant. And you gave birth to her. Did you see? Did God show you that you were going to hate the very one you sit here and rock about baby on the treetop? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I know this gets heavy. Somebody say, this real preacher here. Uh -huh. I, did you see that, Daddy, when you were sitting down there looking at your son in the cradle uh, behind the glass at the hospital? Did you see that one day he was going to grow up and be anointed and you were going to turn your very back on your own son? Why? Because he decided to do what you refused to do. Did you see that? No, you did not see that. You didn't see that. Because if God would have shown you that, you would have drowned your baby in the bathtub. Come on, talk to me, somebody. If God would have shown you that your child was going to be raised up and be higher than you, uh, then you were going to have to submit to your child. Uh, then you would have killed them. Uh, you would have let the raper keep raping them until they took their life. Y'all ain't going to talk to me up in hell. You would have let something bad happen and turned your head around like you don't see it. If God would have shown you and told you that I'm going to raise up your child, but I'm going to reject you, you would have killed your baby. Did you see that? 
Did you see that? You the sister, and yet you are the black sheep of that family. Every other sister get loved. You get treated like Cinderella. Living in a house, got to share underwear. I got to get real here. Got to share bras and socks. But then when it come down to you, you get the hand-me-down. The underwear that the elastic is all out of shape. But God say, don't trip over what you got to wear. Just put it on and be thankful. Be thankful because I'm getting ready to turn this thing around in your favor. Don't trip because I'm getting ready to work something in your favor on your behalf. You don't deserve it, but because they put you through it, it's going to make you worthy enough for me to bless you in spite of it. But this is where it gets rough. Joseph is coming to his brothers just happy as he wants to be. He's happy. Father, send me on the sign. And I'm going to go get my brothers. Yeah. All he wanted to do was just be loved. Yeah. All he wanted to do was just be appreciated. Yeah. Ain't there some of y'all in here? All right. All right. Come on. You just want to be loved. All right. oh, yeah. You don't want, sometimes you don't want tough love. You want compassionate love. Right. Love will take you a long way. And yet it's still, Joseph is skipping down the alley. Uh -huh. Probably was whistling. There go my brothers. Uh -huh. Hey, brothers, brothers. And they got the destiny to say, here come that old yeah, dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't even respect him by calling him by his name. You got to watch out for folks because they, they'll create a name for you just to make mockery of what you are. Uh-huh, you see, you see, see, I got to be real for a minute here. You know, I got folks in my family that, that sit up here and try to call me Debo Steel. Come on here, somebody. I expect the folks in the streets to call me Debo that don't know I'm a pastor. But you in my house and my family, you know I'm a man of God. Don't try to depreciate the calling of my life. The devil is a liar. Come on here, somebody. Don't try to do See, see that I, I didn't say that I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't use a, a, a word to boast in me. I say don't depreciate the anointing. In other words, don't try to decrease the anointing in my life. Respect. Give honors to whom honors is due. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You got folks in your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young folks. Come on. Older folks. Yeah. Young and hot folks. Yeah, yeah. Mid folks. Also, even on social media, you got folks in your family that treat you like frenemies, anti-associate family, not going to invite you to nothing, not unless it's been a fit near. And when you do come, they want to depreciate the value that God esteems you by. Then they get mad when you put them in their place. All right. Then they get mad when you tell them, I ain't who you call me. All right, man. All right, man. Well, you know, you used to be, no, don't you come and address me by who I used to be. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Don't address me by who I used to be. Because you go got to go back over 10 years ago to who I used to be. Come on here. This ain't no fly by night. I'm not no fly by night preacher. Come on here. Been on the scene with God. Come on here, somebody. You got to be careful. Because Joseph wasn't careful. He wasn't careful because he knew no harm. And it's something you grow in the house. Growing up. You did not. Uh-uh, Lord. Don't do that. Don't do this in my Jesus. Come on, come you growing up in a house come on, man. Come on. and you didn't expect what was getting ready to take place to come take on, place. Come on, come on, man. Come on, man. You didn't expect
expect mama boyfriend to take his eyes off of mama and put his eyes on you. And then raise up an altercation in the house on purpose. Just so mama can leave and get in the car and drive around the corner. And then watch this. He come right in your room. Take advantage of you. Then tell you words like if you say something, I'll kill you. They ain't going to believe you no way. Why? Because you already a fast tail little girl. They not going to believe you. Why? Because you already a pig tail little boy. Come on, talk to me somebody. Because not only do young girls get raped, young boys get raped too in the house. The mother, the father, still can't see. God going to take all that and use it for his good. Somebody got to tell the story how I came over. Somebody got to tell the truth that God is a God that can deliver. Somebody got to open their mouth and tell them that Jesus is alive and he's well. Somebody got to tell the truth that made in all things you are more than a conqueror. Somebody got to tell it. If only you can see the things that most of us in here had to go through. You got Joseph growing up. His brother say, they go that old dreamer. There he go right there. Let's do away with him. I'm tired of him. Uh -huh. I'm sick of his dreams. Yeah. Who he think he is. Uh -huh. He think he better than us. Who he think he is. Uh -huh. He think he higher than us. Uh -huh. He ain't got no respect for us. But we're going to teach him some manners today. All right. So the first thing the brothers decided to do was take him and throw him in the pit. Yeah. And he couldn't even put up a fight against 11 of them. Because it's 11 on one. Come on here, somebody. Somebody say, get deep on me. Have you ever had a fight with one of your siblings? Behind something in your house that was yours? Girl, what you doing putting on my stuff? That's mine. And then she get the tripping on you and you now you got the fight. Then you the one that get in trouble. Come on, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You the one get in trouble by your parent. But it's the up sibling that did the wrong and the parents don't want to hear. They, they, they like that one a little bit more than they like you. So watch this. They take it out on you. Beat you in your back. Take a stitch of cord. Y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. Get a stitch of cord. Tell you. Go in there and take your shower without even telling you this stitch of cord going to meet you in that water. Come on here, somebody. And leave wraps across your body. And then they'll have a dance to tell you after they don't beat the living crap out of you. You better not go to school and say nothing. Come on. Here, somebody, you didn't see these things going on and coming in your life, but God say I allowed it to happen so you can bring somebody out of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Joseph didn't know he was finna go down with with a fight, so he didn't even try to put up one. They grabbed the hope to him, picked him up by his legs, grabbed him by his arms, grabbed him around his waist, threw him in a pit. Down there where they use as a trapping mechanism, a trapping device for bears and, and for other type of creatures that, that they're trying to hunt. That's how they would catch it. They would dig a deep, deep pit and they would cover it up with some leaves and a couple of sticks. So when the animals come across it and they out there in the woods hunting, they little go shot, thank you God. And, and they out there hunting, the animal will fall in the pit and then they can kill their prey that way because some of these animals they couldn't go up against like bears. They didn't have the strength of David. Come on here somebody. Some of these things they didn't, they couldn't go up against like a lion. They didn't have the strength of Samson. Come on here somebody. So they had to use what they had to use in order to trap their prey. And when they got the prey in there, that's how they would throw the staff down there, throw rods in there, and they would kill their prey. So they put their brother down in something that they would use to kill an animal. They put their brother in some loaded place, the P-I-T, but they didn't understand that it was preparation in training. God was preparing him in his training. And then God was just P-I-T in this man for preparation in training, but God was preparing him for intense 
and bringing him through uh, the treacherous things that he will go face in his life. He had to go through it. And while he was going through it, God was just standing there looking and never said a word. God didn't tell nobody stop. God didn't tell nobody quit. I'm getting heavy tonight. Uh -huh. You say I've been raped by somebody in my life. Why they didn't stop? God ain't real. The devil is a lie. God said I let them rape you. I allowed it to happen. But what I did allow is for them to kill you. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I let them shoot you. But what I didn't allow is for them to kill you. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I let them put you in a wheelchair. But what I didn't allow is for them to take your spirit while you still in the chair. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I allowed you to smoke that dope and watch your friends heart bust and watch your other friends die. But I didn't let the same dope that they smoke that you smoke. I didn't let it kill you. Why? Because I'm gonna get some glory. I need some glory out of your life. I got a testimony for you. And the only way to overcome the enemy is by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Joseph says, what are y'all doing? They say, get in there. Let's go. Let's go, guys. They leave it. As they leaving, he's in the pit hollering. He's crying out. Brothers, don't do this. Please don't leave me here. Don't treat me like this. Have you ever been at somebody else's mercy and they still did you wrong? Have you ever been at somebody else's lowly and you're saying, look, I don't have no place to go. They still turn their back on you. Come on, talk to me. Have you ever been in a need real bad? I'm talking about a bad need. And then the minute they answer the phone, it goes like this. I ain't got no money today. Well, baby, I just called you because I needed a little something. I can't help you today. I'm all out. I'm all out. I let you borrow something the last time. You didn't do right. Well, I, I, I know I didn't do right, but I really did do right. Well, what did you do? I gave it to my child because I love my child more than I love myself. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh, I, I didn't want to see my child struggle like I had to struggle. But I didn't think my child was going to go out and do the wrong thing. Cause they use manipulation and they use cunning to get me. Uh, uh, you, but watch it, watch it. God say, God say, I let you go through that and I let them turn it back on you so that I can step in and show you I'm still Jehovah Jireh. I'm still a God that'll provide for you. Uh, I ain't got no lights on at home, but God say you still got some food in your box. Uh, but God, my food about to go far. God said nonsense. Uh, go over there and get you an eat you cooler uh, and go get you some ice and put that meat on some ice. Uh, and by this time tomorrow, uh, I'll call Swift Co myself uh, and send a payment through your mail. Uh, they ain't gonna talk to me. Uh, I'll make a miracle out of this thing for you. Uh, and your lights is back on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. He said, Joseph said, don't do this. He cried out. The cry is so intense and horrific until Reuben says, look, we can't leave him in there. The other brother says, man, shut up. We're going to take his garment, dip it in some goat's blood, and then we're going to take it to daddy and tell daddy some wild beast devoured him all along the way coming to get us and we saw it out here in the wilderness. That's bad when folks plotting to kill you get rid of you and then got a scheme on top of it, what we call in our day and time, an alimony. Yeah, right. right. An alibi. Right. Yeah, it's an alibi. Right. They got an alibi. Yeah. And, and, and watch this. They didn't have DNA back in, not, in their day. Uh -huh. They didn't have detectives who would go to the extreme to try to find out what really happened. Right. Uh -huh. All they had to do was rely on the word out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Then the word was established, right? It was the truth or the lie. Yeah. But you got 11 on one. Uh -huh. So you know the father was going to believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph is crying out and he's hollering and he's studying crying to the top of his lungs. And watch this. Now, this is the saddest thing. Somebody asked me, what's that? What's that? 
you got a person who represents praise on God in by the name of Judah. Okay. Judah is the brother to Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. And Judah's supposed to be praised, so Judah should at least praise Joseph yeah. up out of there. Yeah. But you got some folks that you depending on to praise God in your be on your behalf and praise God for you. And them folks ain't praising God for you. Them got them folks praising God on their own behalf huh? and hoping that God don't do nothing for you. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Huh? You got folks talking about I'm praying for you. Huh? Baby, they ain't praying for you, they praying on you. Huh? You got folks talking about I'm praying that everything go well when you ain't and bless you in your endeavors. Huh? Baby, this ain't my season to be over with and done. You must be crazy. Huh? The devil is a liar. Huh? You ain't got to send no blessings with me. The blessings of the Lord follow me every day. Huh? I ain't got to take what you say out of your mouth because sweet and bitter can't come out of the same faucet. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Huh? You can't curse today and bless tomorrow. Huh? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Huh? But the Bible says, huh? can't no man curse what God is blessed. Huh? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Huh? Sister Pat, they might have tried to curse you, huh? but your weapon formed against you had prospered. Huh? Sister Pat, they might try to come against you huh? and say, oh, she ain't going to make it over there. She ain't going to last over there. She'll be running back before she know it. Huh? The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm holy, go fear by baptize, huh? and I'm sold out to God. Huh? I'm not following that man. Huh? I'm following the God that's in that man. I'm not following that church. I'm following the God that's the head of the church. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Look at somebody and say, don't get it twisted. Huh? Tell them, say, it's not about a possible huh? Tell them, he ain't your God. Huh? Tell them, say, Jesus is your God. Huh? Manifested in the flesh. Huh? You follow him as he follow Christ. Wish I had some witnesses in here. Wish I had some real witnesses in this house. Joseph said, crying out. You got Reuben and Joseph and Jacob told Reuben, Reuben, you weaker than water. That's what Jacob told his son. Now that's bad. When you name your children and then you tell them about themselves when they get a little older. I, oh God, I had to come down with something. I think that's why we struggling in, in our elderhood like we did. Okay. Struggling to break generations of curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Because somebody in our family who loved us yeah, yeah, yeah. and supposed to be protecting us uh -huh. turned around and violated us emotionally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Violated us verbally. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Uh -huh. Violated us psychologically. Get mad at how you expect your child to do good in school when they at home here and they ain't nothing but a B.I. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. Uh, how, how you want your daughter not to run behind boys, but uh -huh, all you do is, is, is disrespect her and call her a whore. Come on, here's somebody. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Uh, uh -huh. How you gonna want them to come and talk to you like they would talk to their friend, but you don't even make your presence known when you're in the house. Come on here. Every time they sit by you, you tell them, get up, get out my face. Uh, the devil is a liar. Come on here, somebody. Uh, uh, how, how you gonna want them children to be something good, uh, but you start speaking damnation over their life? Uh, the devil is a liar. If you want your son to be a prophet, then you don't call him a bastard. Come on here, somebody. You call those things which be not as though they are. Who am I preaching to tonight? You got to speak over your children. If you want them to be something in God, you got to speak over them. Amen. Joseph. And all the other brothers. When he came down to Reuben, he said, Reuben, you weaker than water. But last time I checked, water got so much force to it, water can drown you. Water is a liquid, but water can become solid. Water can not only drown you, but it can flush you out. Water can push you. It can move you out of its way. You can't contain water. You can't stop water. Matter of fact, you can't even live without water, so water got a good strength in it. You got to see that Jacob said, Reuben, you weaker than water. Come on, come on. But God said, no, that water that Jacob see is in the negative. Yeah. So I'm going to take that negative and make something positive out of it. Yeah. 
because I'm the God that can turn things around. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Is there anything too hard for God? Mama said you won't be nothing. God said, my soul, you're gonna be all this and some else. Daddy said you'll never amount up to be nothing. But God said, my soul, you're gonna be something and greater. Uh, Amy said you ain't going too far, but the devil is a lie. God said, yes, you are. Uh, uncle said, no, you ain't gonna be nothing just like your daddy ain't nothing. But God said, you're gonna be better than your uncle and your daddy. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Uh huh. And parents, don't you go around there telling your children, I want you to be better than me. No, don't tell them that. Because now what you're trying to do is challenge them. Uh-huh. Because they don't know your whole story. You just tell them you're doing good. But baby, I know you can do better. Who am I talking to tonight? Uh-huh. God said it. 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 My spirit to hear a sound yeah, yeah, yeah. and be touched by it. Yeah. Reuben was touched by the cry of his brother. Uh-huh. And he said, come on. We can't leave him in here. Come on. We can't do this. Come this on. is not right. Come on. Come on. Mm. My God. It ain't right. I'm going to get heavy here. I'm going to get heavy here. Right. Don't you click up with church folks. And no ministry or no church. All right, all right. You got that click over there that talk about the pastor? Yeah, yeah. And talk about they on their way out the door. Uh-huh. And then they call you, ain't that right, girl? And you go, yeah, that's right. Don't click up with that. Okay, okay. Don't click up with them bad, corrupt folks. Uh-huh. The Bible said that be not deceived. Bad company corrupts good manners. You hang out with dogs, you're going to wind up scratching and trying to figure out what's on you. You know what the house is. You got fleas. You hang out with dogs, y'all ain't going to talk to me. And you wonder why you shed some of that spiritual hair? You got the main juice, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Motor oil ain't gonna fix that. Mm-mm. You, you hang out with dogs and you wonder why you got this little bug in your ear. You got ticks, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. But God is the only one that can put a flea powder all over you and clean you back up. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. God is the only one that can take a dead situation and bring life into it. Yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, God can. Oh, he says to him, he says, can't leave me here. They say, okay, well, what do you prefer we do? Uh-huh. What you want us to do? Uh-huh. This is what he said. Uh-huh. He said, let's sell them to the Malachite. Okay. The Malachite soldier is coming through the field. Uh-huh. And the wilderness, what he is. They didn't even see that Joseph was really intervening for them because he could have started something with them. He had some money, 30 shekels, 30 pieces of silver. Something when family sell you out for a little nothing. Bad when your husband sell you out for a little nothing. Bad when your wife sells you out for a little nothing. Bad when your relatives sell you out for a little. Now, how do they sell you out? When they join the club and talk about you on the phone to somebody here. Oh, come on, get somebody. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You selling me out. Uh-huh. If you married to me and you talking down on me, you talking down on yourself, but you selling me out. Uh-huh. If I'm supposed to be your man and I'm supposed to be the one holding you down and you holding me down and you talk about me, uh, you selling me out. If I'm supposed to be your pastor but you love me on Sunday, uh, shout with me on Tuesday, but Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Monday, you on the phone talking about me like a dog with no feelings. You selling me out. Uh, the Bible say, what you do unto the least of my brethren, you done it also unto me. Uh, the Bible say that every time we do wrong about each other, we crucify Christ afresh. I don't know about you, but I'm just sick and tired of hearing folks talk about folks. It's either you shut up or put up. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. I don't 
need nobody negative in my ear. God, me and Deacon West were talking this morning. Uh, Deacon West said, Pastor, did such and such and such and such take place? I told him, I said, yeah, Deacon, but it didn't go well. Deacon said, you know what? That's far enough right there, Pastor. He said, because I'm doing better now since I done got all that out of me. He said, but I don't want to get back to how you come on here talk to me, somebody. He said, I don't want to get back to how I used to be, so I'm just glad that I got my breaking. He said, I wanted to break on Thanksgiving. He said, but I held it. I don't know if you saw it. I said, I saw it. He said, I wanted to break that Sunday in Sunday school. I don't know if you saw it. I said, yeah, I saw it. He said, but God waited to a Saturday to break me. Oh, I'm here to tell you, he might not break you Sunday morning, but whatever day of the week that he breaks you, that's the day that he made you. When you get broken, and God fix you the same day. I thank God he's not like a mechanic. He'll look at your car and tell you what's wrong, and then decide whether or not he want to fix it. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. And if the price ain't right, he ain't fixing it right. What thing I learned? God said, bring your ugly self here. Bring your ashes here. I'll give you beauty for your ashes. Bring your broken self here. I'll bring you close to me because you're broken. And I'll breathe on you. I'll cover you. I'll hold you. I'll rock and reel with you. I'll stand with you until I make you whole. I'll put you on my potter's wheel. I'll modify you. I'll put you on the potter's wheel. I'll clean you up. I'll put you back on the potter's wheel. I will transform you. I'll put you on the potter's wheel. I'll make you a new vessel. I'll put you on the potter's wheel. And I'll spin all of that negative stuff out of your life. But you got to stand the breaking. Got the period to withstand the breaking. Joseph didn't know that he had to go through all of this just to get to that. The this that he went through was everything that was present and prevalent in his life. Stuff that was going on right then and there. It's hard when you're facing tribulation back to back to back to back to back. And God still ain't told you nothing. He's just standing there watching you go through. As Joseph was going through and he got sold off to the Malachite uh -huh. for 30 pieces of shell. The enemy didn't mind. No, no, no. They, he was looking for somebody to capture anyway. Come on, come on. That's why he came that way. Okay, okay. If it wasn't Joseph, it was going to be one of the other brothers. Okay, okay, okay. But God knew he couldn't put now one of the other brothers right, in right. that predicament, right. nor in that position. Come on, come on. There's going to be three P's in this plot in a minute. Come on, come on, come on. Joseph was in a predicament. Uh -huh. But God put him in position. position. Why did God put him in position? Because God getting ready to take him through preparation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he got a predicament in a position. But it's going to be for preparation. Uh -huh. We got three P's in the pot right here. Uh huh. Now watch this. I'm going to show you about the other three pieces in the pot. Not only is it a predicament that brought about the position he in, which is actually for God to do something in preparation for him, but he goes the other one. God say, now I'm going to use the preparation for another purpose. So this is the purpose of the preparation. My purpose is to save your father's house. My purpose, y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. <laughs> My purpose is this: is that I got to get you to Egypt, uh -huh, a place I brought your people out of, in order for your people to reap a harvest, uh, and in order for you to take back what the devil stole from you. Uh, I got to use preparation to put you into purpose. Uh, and watch this now, since you got purpose in your life. Uh, you can stand for something. Uh -huh. Joseph said this. Uh, when they sold him into Potiphar house, uh, the woman lied on the boy. Said that the young man tried to rape me. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that Potiphar asked Joseph, he said, 
act, he said, tell me if this is true. Uh, and I will stop this. And you know, I trust you. I believe you. Uh, why? Because I recognize God is with you. That's what the Bible says. Uh, that every time Joseph did something, God was with Joseph. Uh, uh -huh, Joseph planted in that field and God was with him. Uh, this man bought him from a slave. Uh, I mean, bought him as a slave. Uh, but made him a prince. Y'all ain't gonna see that. Uh, so his purpose, uh, he go to second P. Uh, took him to being a prince. Uh, Y'all, I feel like shouting in here. Uh, but he wasn't in position to where God wanted him just yet. Uh, he was in position uh, as far as he goes to God saying, this is where you are. Uh, but where God wants him, he's not in that position yet. Uh, so his purpose uh, had driven him to being a prince. Uh, the woman lied uh, because he wouldn't sleep with her. Uh, he said, my, my Lord, that's what he kind of testified the man as. Uh, he said, my Lord said, I can have any and everything in this house. Uh, but he told me, don't touch you. I'm sorry, R. Kelly. Uh, I feel like preaching here. Uh, you heard Mr. Big say, don't touch her because she's contagious. Uh, uh -huh, but you still wanted to creep on the down low. Uh, the devil is a liar. Uh, Joseph said, I'm not falling short. Uh, uh -huh, I trust God. Uh, why? Because my mama gave me integrity. Uh, no, my mama gave me wisdom. Uh, my daddy gave me integrity. Uh, and y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh, but my God gave me a vision. Uh, and I can't perish uh, and forfeit the vision uh, behind no sweet booty. Uh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Because uh, you can get in something for 15 minutes uh, and it can take you 30 to 45 years uh, to get out of it. Uh, I feel like preaching here. Uh, I feel like preaching in this house. Uh, oh God. Uh, you can go climb into something uh, for five minutes uh, and it brings you a lifetime of pain. Uh, Yeah. Uh -huh. 
where you're going to be desolate uh, and you're going to be down there with the criminals. Come on here, somebody. Uh, I just wish I knew some folks that say what they had on my record then. Uh, it's not what's on my record now. Uh, oh, y'all, they going to talk to me. Uh, uh -huh, I might got a juvenile record uh, and I might got a record with the city or uh, uh, with the state. Come on here, somebody. Uh, but I don't have that bad eternal record. Come on here, somebody. Uh, oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh, why? I don't have it because we know all things work together for the good. My bad did not stop me from getting to the all good. Y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. So Joseph says, I can't say a word. I'm just going to keep my mouth closed because I don't want to see you kill this woman. I don't need that blood on my hands. So I just let somebody else come through and give you the bad news. I'm quite sure that the man knew what kind of woman he had anyhow. Uh, the man knew what kind of woman he had. He knew he married somebody who just wanted to be wined and dined. Oh, I'm going to hit home with this one. Uh, you sisters. Don't you go get no man looking for that man to take care of you, wine and dine you, and make you fine and all this. And you think you just supposed to sit up there on his table with your leg cocked up on social media and just bear babies? The devil is a liar. 20 some years my tail. Uh huh, you better get a job because if it don't work out and you 30 some years old and don't know how to do nothing, you won't be catching a city bus and probably don't know how to do that. Come on here, somebody. Don't you sit around waiting on nobody to make you happy. You get up and make yourself happy. Don't you sit around waiting on somebody to do something for you. When God put all that in boo you see and driving you. You get up with every intensity you got. And you start moving into some stuff. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I got news for you brothers. Uh-huh, you brothers. Talking about God gonna send me a wife. But you don't know how to cook, brother. The devil is a liar. What you think she just gonna slave over in the kitchen? And you don't know how to cook? The devil is a liar. You don't even know how to do a grill, a proper grilled cheese. The devil is a liar. Uh, what you think she gonna be your laundry care? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. She's not your laundry mat. You got to learn how to wash and fold your own clothes. Put your own boxes. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna talk to me, I see. Uh, you got to learn how to fold your own socks. Uh, and I don't need you folding up the sheets all any kind of way, balling them up. Uh, no, baby, you fold them this way. Uh, fold it that way. Uh, tuck it over, hold it under your uh, chin. Uh, tuck it and roll it and fold it and fold it. Uh, uh, I need to talk to somebody up in here. Uh, you think that she's just gonna sit here uh, and just go to work while you ride around in her car? Uh, and she drop, you drop her off at work? So you can go see the next Miss New Booty. The devil is a liar. Can I preach like I want to in here? The devil is a liar. Look at somebody and say, you better learn how to do something. You got to learn how to do something. Uh, you got to learn how to do something. Because when you know how to do something, God can use you for something. Uh, you got to understand now, it is here that Joseph is saying, uh, I, can't, I can't let this be this way. I can't mess up this man's house. I don't care if this man did. Y'all excuse me tonight. But I don't care if this man tried to take this whore and turn her into a housewife. I let him find that out. But I won't be the bad news barrier. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Uh, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Joseph says I can't do it. So power to say I'm putting you in prison. Uh, he go to therapy. Uh, I'm a prince. I'm in prison. But I'm not gonna live like a prisoner. Oh, you got to understand this is the therapy. Because now I move for purpose. And I move until being a prince. Trying to work in my purpose. But the third P is this. Somebody asked me, say, what it is? This is the third P. The third P is not pleasing. But the third P is 
says it's all pleasurable. Uh, in other words, God, uh, if it pleases you to put me in prison, uh, then let it be pleasurable. Uh, oh, he had the pleasure. Uh, uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Uh, he had the pleasure uh, of meeting the baker. Uh, he had the pleasure. Y'all not going to talk to me. Uh, uh, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Uh, he had the pleasure. Yeah. 
now. Now watch this. Pharaoh said, you know what? You interpreted the right dream Because I didn't tell you He said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do Now watch this preparation Watch how he moved from being a prince To being a king now He said, I'm going to give you Because hold on, I have to back up for a minute uh, Potiphar tried to give him Everything in his kingdom But it wasn't for him uh, And it came with except Now watch what Pharaoh says Pharaoh said, everything in this kingdom That I own is yours. And I put you as second in command to me. You are Hebrew and I'm an Egyptian. We don't serve the same God. But I recognize that there is a higher power with you. I recognize that there is a God with you. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I recognize there's a God with you. So watch what he says. He gives him all of Egypt. And he said, I need you to govern that. Now, can you imagine how many folks was jealous? But Joseph wasn't stunning them folks. I feel like Clarence Carter right there, Mother Patricia. I ain't stunning you. Look at somebody and say, when they talk about me, I ain't stunning them. When they fish up my path, I ain't stunning them. When they throw dirt on my name, I ain't stunning them. When they scrutinize me, I ain't studying them. When they try to ostracize me, I ain't even studying them. When they try to criticize me, I ain't studying Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. High five your neighbor and tell them I ain't studying them. Uh -huh, I ain't studying them because I'm too busy looking up to the hills which come for my help. I'm too busy and wrapped up and tangled and tied up in Christ. I ain't got time to stud on folks. I ain't got time to try to figure out who can do me and say that I am. The devil is, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. The devil is a liar. As uh, long as the devil know who I am, I ain't got nothing to worry about. As long as Jesus know who I am, I ain't got, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Come on here, somebody. Yeah, I'm getting ready to close here. So watch what happens here. As I get ready to close on y'all. Uh, as he sits there, he says, I give you everything. That was seven years of plenty. Uh, Joseph stored up all the wheat and all of the grain uh, and all of the barley loaves. And he stored up everything that was non-perishable. Mm -hmm. And as the years went on, now, seven years of famine came in, but he wasn't hit by the planted rock. He wasn't hit hard. They were sustained and kept, but there was something that did get hit, and that was his family. You got to understand that sometimes or another, God will put you through the struggle, just to place you on top, and then God will make you with a head and not the tail, not so you can talk down on folks who came against you, huh? not so you can come against folks huh? who came against you, huh? but so that you can tell them huh? what you meant for evil, huh? it was meant for my good, huh? look at your neighbor and say neighbor, huh? it's meant for my good, huh? tell them say all of the stuff I had to endure, huh? it was meant for my good, huh? being talked about and lied on, huh? it was meant for my good, huh? being all left down on the side of the road, huh? it was meant for my good. Huh? The man put me out, huh? it was for my good. Huh? The woman walked out, huh? it was for my good. Huh? Had a first time bad marriage, huh? but got a good marriage now. Huh? It was for my good. Huh? Lost all my possessions, huh? it was for my good. Huh? Got down to nothing, huh? it was for my good. Huh? Long as my soul is intact, huh? it's for my good. The devil hit my finances, but he didn't hit my mind. The devil hit my body, but he couldn't touch my soul. The devil touched my pockets, but he couldn't mess with my spirit. Because I'm too busy thanking God for this. Because if it wasn't for this, I would not have that. If it was not for this, I wouldn't be in that. Look at your neighbor. Say it was for my good. All of the hurts, it was for my good. All of the rejections, it was for my good. All of the back. It was for my good. So now I'm too busy lifting up the ring of my God, and I will bless the Lord at all times. I will lift him up. I will extol him. I will lift him up. I will give him glory. I will extol. It was for my good. Mama wasn't there. It was for my good. 
Yeah. It was for my good. Yeah. 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 Somebody tell him it was for my good. For my good. For my good. All of the hurt. For my good. All of the backbite. For my good. Joseph looked at his brothers and said, what you meant for evil, God meant for my good. What you tried to do that was going to stop me, God did a shadow in my life. Why you tried to bring me down, God brought me back up. When you tried to persecute me, God Put me on a straight path. You thought I was dead? I ain't dead. I feel like preaching here. High five somebody. High five the preacher back there. And tell them, say, neighbor. Tell them there's still some life in you left. Say, neighbor. There's still some life in you left. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. There's still some life in you left. Tell them, say, you're crying. But there's still some life in you left. You might be hurt. But there's still some life in you left. You might feel afflicted, but there's still some life in you left. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, I ain't dead yet. Tell them I ain't dead yet. I ain't dead yet. I might be weak, but I ain't dead yet. I might be hurting, but I ain't dead yet. I might be twitching, but I ain't dead yet. Oh, don't unplug me. Jehovah's Son. 
Ama, que rouba, Nisse, que Elias, Yashadar, Elohim, que Elias, Yashua, que Elias, o Waymaker, have you ever been down? And he made a way out of nowhere. He is. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is a present help in a time of need. God is. God is. He is. And since he is, I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. More than a conqueror. From the pit yeah. to a penthouse. 
and then put him from the penthouse as a prince into a prison. Move him from a prison as a prince and make him a king in a palace. And then his brothers got to come and the dream still came to pass. Yeah, God, I hate to tell you like that. Uh, it took so many years, but the dream still came to pass. How did it come to pass? Because it didn't come to pass as long as the father was living. It came to pass when the father died. Because when the father died, then that's when they say, uh, this is what daddy told me to tell you in his dying testimony, that you would forgive us. Joseph turns his back and he looks at the cross and he says what you meant for evil, God meant for my good. I'm not turning my back on you to say I don't want to have nothing to do with you. I'm turning my back on you because I need to have a little talk with Jesus and I'll tell him all about my problems. Y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. I'm not turning my back on you. I'm turning my back to the cross because he said come boldly to the throne of grace. I'm not turning my back on you. You're my brother. I'm turning my back toward this so I can talk about that. And what I'm talking about that is that that ain't got nothing to do with this because I'm not going by this. I'm going by that. This says that we don't went far enough but that says keep on going. Think y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Turn me off, God. Turn me off tonight. This says you don't went far enough and you can't go no further. But that said, keep on chucking. Take a licking and keep on ticking. You might get hit, might get knocked down. But look at your neighbor and say, bounce back, bounce back, bounce back, bounce back. Tell them, sit back, pick up your faith. Pick up the motivation. Bounce back. Pick it up. Yeah, yeah. Pick it up. Okay, easy to tell you about how Joseph took your brothers when they first came. And he said to one of them, Don't you got another brother? And they said, Yeah. Bring him here. And then I'll bless you. Yeah. But I'm going to send you away with some, some stuff. Uh -huh. So Joseph sent him away with us sometimes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But they had to go get Benjamin. Come on now. He wanted them just to see what it feel like to lose something you love. Okay. Okay. He wanted them to experience, not feel the hurt, uh -huh. but he wanted them to get the experience uh -huh. of going back to report to your daddy. Uh -huh. The same thing that you lied about, now you got to really tell the truth about. What are you simply saying to me tonight? I'm simply saying God said this right here. Is that there's some folks that's been lying on you for years. And guess what? God for the now turn all them years of lies around. And they're going to have to go back and resist that. And start telling all these years of truth about you now. Huh? God going to make liars start telling truth. Come on here somebody. Huh? Uh -huh. Because why? Liars going to need your help. Huh? That's why you got to learn how to wait out your liars. Huh? You got to learn how to wait out your backbiters. Huh? You got to learn how to wait them out. Huh? You wait out those hypocrites. Huh? You got to wait them out. Huh? Don't you move. You stay right there with God. Huh? You stay right there in the cliff of the rock huh? and wait them out. Huh? You wait out those phony folks. Huh? You wait out the banker that's trying to deny your loan for a new house or a new car. Huh? You got to learn how to wait them out. Huh? Wait out that bank huh? that say we can't give you nothing huh? right about now huh? because that land huh? is in foreclosure. Huh? The devil is a liar. Huh? It's for my closure. I feel like preaching here. Wait them out. Wait them out. Wait them out. Wait them out. Joseph waited them out. He waited till they got back. Yeah, yeah. And they was on their road. They had an item in their bag. He put it there. So when the man Joseph's son after them stopped them. Check the bag. Yeah. Parallel operated that and you steal it. Uh-huh. Accused them of being thieves. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They was honest then. All right. 
We didn't take nothing. Oh, y'all was telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why you couldn't do that in the first part? Right now, right now, right, right, right. See, that's the question we be having sometimes when yeah. folk go and do things and then come back and want to apologize. Yeah. Why you just couldn't do right the first time? Okay, okay, okay. But now you got to understand this. If God was to allow them to do right the first time, you wouldn't be where you at right now. Okay, okay, okay. If some folks would have did right the first time, you wouldn't drive what you drive. Call here. If some folks want to say what they said, you wouldn't live in the house you live in now. If some folks want to did what they did, you wouldn't be where you are right now. Oh, come on here, somebody. I know that's true. Uh -huh. I know that's so true. Why? Because God took all of that negative and he put some fire under you and he made a positive thing out of that negative thing. Uh -huh. God took what they said that was negative and God said, now nah, I got the glory out of their life. Uh, you got to understand, God said, I took what you said that they can't, uh, and I dropped the T off of there, and I left the word can. Uh, I took what you said they won't, uh, and I dropped the T, uh, and I told them they won't. Uh, Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh, I took the word don't uh, and dropped the T, uh, and I said it's done. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Oh, uh, good God, I feel like preaching, cousin. I, I feel like this house. I feel like preaching tonight. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor. Tell them say don't trouble. Don't trouble your own water. Just wait on the angel to trouble it. Tell them there's an angel coming that's going to trouble the water. Tell them say don't be like the man that just sat by the pool for 38 years. Look at your neighbor say neighbor. Don't sit by the pool but if you can't walk you better start rolling over Roll over, I feel like preaching in here. Tell them say roll over, roll over, roll over, roll into the pool. Tell them neighbor, say neighbor, don't be like the woman with the issue of blood and suffer for 12 long years. Tell them you got to drag yourself in Jesus' presence. You might have to crawl into his presence. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor, don't be like blind boy and stay blind. You better open your mouth and holler until God gets his attention. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. Shake your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor. I need you to come out. You are Lazarus. Come out of that dead situation. You are Lazarus. Come out of that tomb. You Lazarus. Come out of the cave. Come out of the poker. Come out of the tomb. Come out when the Bible said in the book of Ezekiel that God told Ezekiel go down to the valley and when you get to the valley tell me what you see Ezekiel said I see some dry bones that ain't got no meat on it God told Ezekiel speak to them bones and command them bones to rise up in me I heard when Ezekiel said, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let God penetrate you. It'll be for your good. Let God operate on you. It'll be for your good. Let God fix your heart. It'll be for your good. Let God restore your mind. It'll be for your good. Let God fix whatever's broken. It'll be for your good. It may not feel good to be like Isaac and get ready to be a sacrifice. But God got a ram down in the bush. I know that's right. Uh, come on here, somebody. Can I get a witness? Don't fool me now. Look at your neighbor. Because I feel my help coming, y'all. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know a man that can turn water into wine. Say, neighbor, I know a man that can unstop their fears. Say, neighbor, I know a man that can take the lane and make them leap for joy. I know a man that can only do what only he can do. I know a man that came in lowly and meek. I know a man that came on a donkey and healed diseases and cast out devils all in his name. I know a man that traveled through Jerusalem, didn't have no car, but got around.
around just fine. I know a man that told Peter mother-in-law, rise up. I know a man that told the damsel, Talitha Kula, which means damsel arise. I know a man that can touch you without you even feeling it. His name is Jesus. I hope the Bible said about 30 years old he started his ministry went around preaching and teaching healing all those who were sick and afflicted but one day they took on Jesus from judgment hall to judgment hall y'all ain't God alright ain't God alright ain't God alright they took him down to Potiphar's house they took him over there were pilot heads. They took him down in a prison, beat him, whipped him, wounded him, and bruised him. But it was for his good that there is a lie. It was for our good. Because I heard when Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid on him, and with his stripes, I am healed. They whipped him with a flat bar. They whipped him 39 stripes and saved one. They beat him till he was unrecognizable. They beat him till nobody could figure out who he was, but he still had some strength to put a cross on his shoulder. They took 72 thorns from a thorn tree and made a crown out of it. I'm still like preaching, y'all. Can I preach Jesus? Can I lift him up? Can I preach like a woman? But they lifted him with the crown of thorns in his head. Blood streaming down his head from the crown of thorns, causing him to have his equilibrium system off balance. And after they whipped him, he still bleed. After they pierced him, he still bleed. He bled from his head. He bled from his eyebrows. He bled from his side. He bled from his back. He bled across the eyes. He bled in the nostrils. He bled in the mouth. He bled in the heart. He was dying, but he didn't die just yet. But he was dying, but he still fought with the life he had. I feel like preaching, y'all. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you know that man? The one that wore a raw, a raw priesthood colors. But then it was something that hit me. It what got me is it's when Pilate looked at him and said, Who shall I release unto you? I got a man called Barabbas, but I got a man called Jesus. The people said, Give us Barabbas and let go. Jesus. We want the man that's known for causing trouble, but we don't want the man that's known for solving problems. Give us a troublemaker and do away with the problem solver. I heard Pilate say, bring me a basin. I wash my hand. I find no for him. I don't want to be guilty of no innocent blood. The Bible said they took Jesus and threw a cross on his shoulder and made him walk with a cross still beating them. I feel like preaching here. They kept on beating them as he was carrying a cross. Now I'm thinking in my mind when is it going to be enough? But I heard he said I got to make all things new again. They got to do this so I can show them how much I love them. They beat me for every scrape I take. It's for your healing. For every scrap I receive, it's for your healing. Yeah, I feel like preaching, y'all. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let the man preach. Let that man preach. I feel like preaching here. I'm getting ready to close. I said that about four times. But I feel the Holy Ghost. And I got to preach this. All of a sudden, Jesus carrying the cross. What really got me 
Uh, it's when that one man uh, by the name of Simi uh, was coming through. Uh, a black man uh, traveling from Ethiopia uh, saw Jesus uh, struggling with the cross uh, and he went and helped her. Uh, bear the cross, uh, walked it up the hill, uh, called Calvary, uh, the place of Golgotha, uh, the place of skull. Uh, but Jesus, uh, I feel like preaching, uh, Jesus uh, put the cross down. Uh, they didn't tell him uh, to drop the cross. Uh, so what they did was, uh, after he dropped the cross, uh, they took another blow at him, uh, and they dropped my Jesus, uh, and then they took his arm uh, and stretched it wide. I feel like preaching, y'all. Uh, they took the other arm uh, and they stretched it wide. Uh, I feel like lifting them up. Uh, I feel like preaching here. Uh, and then they nailed him uh, in his hands. Uh, they nailed uh, his other hands. Uh, then they nailed uh, his feet uh, while they were stacked on top of one another. Uh, then they nailed him, uh, nailed him, uh, turned the cross over, uh, and broke the nails. Uh, so you can't come down. Uh, lifted the cross up, uh, but they don't know uh, that they they lifted the cross up. Uh, all hell was gonna break loose. Uh, they just didn't know uh, when they lifted the cross up. Uh, he was gonna start drawing uh, all men. Uh, Cause I heard uh, the Bible say, uh, if I uh, be lifted up uh, from the earth, uh, I'll draw uh, all men. Uh, ain't God alright? Uh, ain't God alright? Uh, ain't alright? Uh, he drawing. Man looked up, 
and said, surely this is the Son of God. And if we would have known, we wouldn't have done it. I need to parenthetically pause, put a pin in the bubble before we bust and get in trouble and let you know that there'll be some surely moments in your life. Surely, Moses, uh, what folks gonna say, uh, surely uh, you're a woman of God. Uh, surely uh, you're a man of God. Uh, surely uh, you're a child of the king. Uh, surely uh, you are anointed. Uh, surely uh, you are who you say you are. Uh, surely uh, I see it now. Uh, I see the report. Uh, surely. Uh, so I'm back to Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, He's on the cross. He's dead. Ain't moving. Gave up the ghost. Now, they say, can we take his body and give him a proper burial? And the Bible said that they took him and placed him in Joseph Methusia inside his tomb that he lit them. It was a borrowed tomb. In other words, First Lady Bolden, he wasn't planning on taking residence there. He wasn't planning on living there. That's why I'm here to say, we not going to live in a dead church because the God we serve, he's alive. We ain't going to shut our mouth because they say we preach too long. We ain't going to quit because they say we testify too much. We not going to stop shouting or stop dancing or stop praising him because of how they feel. We going to lift up the name of our God because God's not dead. He's yet alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. Say yes. He's not dead. And since he's not dead, he goes down. And he goes down into the depths of hell. They might have took him off the cross, but he was already down in hell. They tried to put him in the Jehovah Witness tomb. You know, Jehovah Witness says that the place Jesus went was called Shiloh. That's what Jesus was calling the grave. That's what Jesus meant by hell. Sorry, Jehovah Witness. You got the scripture wrong. He went down into the lower parts of the earth. That's called hell. That's past Hades. I feel like preaching here. He went down there and he talked to the gates. And as he was walking, he said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the king of glory come on in. The demon behind the gate said, who is this king of glory? Who is this person that I should obey? Because that ain't Satan. So who are you? Jesus said, I'll tell you who I am. I'm the Lord. Mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle, strong, and mighty. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he went to hell for me and brought me out. So I'm going to stay with him because he's going to take me to heaven. He went to hell for my daughter, and I believe that he'll bring her out. He went to hell for my job. So I'm going to believe for that promotion. He went to hell. For my kid folks, he went to hell. For my neighbors, he went to hell. For my husband, he went to hell. For my wife, he went to hell. For my mama, he went to hell. For my daddy, he went to hell, cousin. For my kid folks, he went to hell. For my ancestors, he went down to hell and with the devil and took the keys of hell, took the keys of death, took the keys of the grave, come out of the grave with a whole slew of people, all the way from Adam, all the way up to Lazarus, he brought them all back, oh God, I feel like preaching here, and when he brought them up, he led captivity captive, but then he stopped, in the mid of the air and said, wait a minute, I can't go back to my father and not leave you a gift. So he dispatched 
Christ. Some gifts on earth. Gave some apostles. Gave some pastors and teachers. Gave some evangelists. And gave some prophets. For the perfecting of the saints. He said, you don't need something. Until the Holy Ghost comes. So get the gift. You got to understand. I think I'm in my prophetic mode. But you got to understand. That the gifts come before the calling. Because gifts and calling. Come without repentance. You ain't got to repent for it. It's already given. So the gifts and the calling. Let me say it like this. You get the gift first. Then you get the call. Uh -huh. You got to understand. He not going to call you. If he ain't gave you nothing. Uh, he can't call you uh -huh. if he ain't gave you nothing. Because when he called and you answer, he said, did you get the package? Y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. You miss your place to shout. He said, did you get the package? Uh, yeah, Lord, I got it. He said, now it's time to let the gift make room for itself. Open the gift up. Because it comes the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is going to fulfill the gift. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. So as he leave it up, he takes up, the, stops in midair, gives all of the gifts, give it to the church. Every man begin to see him taking up. Every person see folks coming out of the grave, see folks walking out of water, looking at folks walk up into heaven, and they are amazed, like oh my God! Oh, I got one last statement to make, and I'm done. The Bible said. That when Jesus finally got to heaven, he took all of the blood that he shed, and he took the blood, and he took it to the mercy seat of God. I mean, the judgment seat, rather. And when he took it to the judgment seat, God looked at him and said, what is this that you bring me? He said, I brought you your word that did not return void, but it accomplished what you sent it out to do. You so loved the world. You gave them me. I have to die for the world. I gave them you. Now we gonna come back together. Here's the blood. I want this seat to be transformed. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? He said, I need this seat to be transformed. Why do the seat need to be transformed? Because if it's a seat of judgment and it don't get transformed to the seat of mercy, then when Pat sin, Pat got to die. But if mercy stand there, mercy will say, give her another chance. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. If the preacher sin, the preacher got to die. But mercy says, Give them another chance. If the people walk away from God, judgment says they got to die. But mercy says, let them alone a little while longer. And I'll call them back. But grace says, wait a minute, judgment. I can't let you jump on mercy. I got to stand with mercy. Because I'm goodness. And that's mercy. And everywhere they go, I follow them. So yeah. So I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel no evil, because thou art with me. Thou rod, thy staff, it comforts me all the days. And my cup is running over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So now, when I walk in the building, I don't walk in with pity. I walk in with praise. Because this is not the house of pity. This is the house of praise. This is not the house of hopelessness. This is the house of hope. This is not the house of despair. This is the house of rejoicing. Oh, we are troubled on every side. Yet we are not in distress. Persecuted, but not forsaken, not abandoned, cast down, but we're not destroyed. These are light afflictions. They only last, but for a moment. As I close, Paul said it in 3 Corinthians. His grace is sufficient for me. Even for my good. 
Come on, give God a hand, pray. Oh, I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. There was four of my good. Four of my good. The people that walked out of your life and act like they don't know you no more, it's for your good. That season of struggling with those same bad folks, and now you over here doing better all by yourself, it was for your good. That mental state you was in, you wanted to throw in the towel and kill yourself, the spirit of suicide, and God had to lift that spirit up off you, it was for your good. That husband that act like he don't want you no more and he done left you, it's for your good. Come on here, somebody. That wife that don't want to stop your husband from miscuous stuff, it's for your good. That daughter that still want to waver and treat you like you ain't never done nothing good for her, let her go and do and say what she want. You just lift up God and know it's for my good. Yeah. For my good. But they don't see the light in me. Uh -huh. Well, I say they do. Yeah, they do. That's why they're attacking me. Because uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. if it wasn't no light, that they wouldn't attack what uh -huh. they see. Uh -huh. All right. All right. A man can't attack nothing in the dark. Because uh -huh. right. he can't see. Yeah. Yeah. Some folks like, the Bible said they love darkness rather than the yeah. light. Yeah. 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 Some folks say, hey, turn that light off. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, the light is off. All right. Shut it off. Uh -huh. off. Oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about the light of me. Oh, I can't be here. Come on. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, I got to get out of here. Hey, I got to go. You sit up on the heel. When you sit something, it's position. And then why did didn't say it can't be moved. It said it can't be here. So even if you take me and move me, I still can't be here. Even if you try to hide me, I'm still going to shine. You can't hide this. You can't hide God. God said, you can't hide me. You can't cover me up. I'm too bright. Light shine. Let your light so shine. That men will see your good works. And glorify your father. Which is in heaven. You don't need no prayer line tonight. Not after all that preaching. Because yeah. in all that preaching, you haven't received a healing or deliverance. Uh -huh. yeah. Something wrong with your spirit. Right. Yeah. 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 Because this one no show. Yeah. This wasn't this wasn't no no yeah. preparated yeah. sermon. This uh -huh. wasn't a prepared sermon. Come on. Yeah. It was an un unprepared message that God gave me right yeah. through the time that I was driving home, and He said, "For my good." And now I must tell you yeah. who good it was for. Okay. Okay. It wasn't for ours. When the word my is being said, it was for his good. Because God said, I did everything for my pleasure. That I will get the glory. It ain't about you. I could have chose somebody else, but because I didn't want to, I used you for my good. To show my good to the world. To show my glory to the world. To show my anointing to the world. So don't get it twisted. It's not about you bolding. It ain't about you. That's my preaching. That's me in there preaching. That's me that's hooping and hollering. That's me that's edifying the church. That's me that's building the church. Why? Because except the Lord build the house, the builder that builds labor but in vain. Except God watches over the city. The watchman watches in vain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It ain't even about us. It's about him. It's about him. It's about him. When you play, it ain't about you. It's about him. It's him that want to play. No flesh is weak. His spirit is with him. I don't want to play. He said, I want to play. I don't want to dance. He said, I want to dance. I got to show the world that I'm still alive. And if the world, which is his people, that world, the ones who do know him, if they don't cry out, he will raise up stones and rocks that will cry out. Something is going to give him some glory. can afford for the rocks to cry out in my place. Father in heaven, we bless you. We thank you right now. 
It's for your good. Everything that you did, you did it intentionally. We might have thought it was an accident, but it was an incident. It had to happen. So we thank you for it right now. Even though we felt some of the whipping and the piercing, we felt the persecution, but we haven't felt it to the degree that you have to experience, that you had experienced it to. But we can say it was for your good. Because in the midst of it, we didn't die, but you did. So you died to it. Now help us to die to it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you now. In Jesus' name. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you the honor, God. We give it to you right now. That old song said, Take me to the water. Take me to the water. To be baptized. Y'all remember that song? They used to sing that when folk would get baptized. But when the Spirit fall on you and you get baptized by the Spirit, you used to say, Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. To be baptized. Yeah, I heard my grandma she used to be in the kitchen cutting up them yams, sweet potatoes from scratch, cutting them. First she peeling them and then she cutting them uh -huh. over the pot while they boil the water. Uh -huh. And I heard she say, none but the righteous. All right. None but the righteous shall see God. Oh, it's just something about the old song. They'll break you and put you back together. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. That is our prayer. We're signing off.